Hi everyone. Uh, today I'm going to demonstrate how to use GeoGebra to do a little bit of modelling. So I, um, I have an image of a, uh, a pretty famous landmark here, the Sydney Harbour Bridge, which I am just going to import into GeoGebra. And uh, once I have this object, so note, note, note carefully that you've got this uh, selection tool um, highlighted, then you can uh, reposition this wherever you like. You can use these two anchors A and B, uh, and you can resize or rotate or put the thing wherever you like. Now that helps because we can uh, we can align the origin of our coordinate system with a significant point or a point of our choice on our image. And I'm going to tr to use the uh, this point down here where the uh, the structure comes down to I suppose ground level um, at this side left hand side as my origin. The other thing that uh, I want to consider is that uh, I know from a bit of uh, internet research that the the deck here of the bridge between the two pillars at either side is pretty close to 560 metres. So I'd, I'd like to make this, I could go 5.6 for the, uh, the size of it, that seems pretty good, so I've just used point B there to stretch so that the uh, that's pretty close. I can check up here if I really want to and uh, see how I go. I could fiddle for ages but for the purpose of this that's that's good enough. And uh, I can use the mouse wheel to roll so uh, or I can just use the zoom button here. And now I can see that that's not quite where the origin was so I'll just move my image back up to where I wanted it. And there we go. Now I'm very close to the origin. If I um, if I want to sort of uh, take a little bit more control than just what I have with the mouse here, then I can press the shift key and I can use the left and right arrow to nudge the image, the selected object, uh, just ever so slightly. So now I'm very happy with that because I've got the point A is in line with the origin and point B is in line with 5.6 representing 560 metres on my scale and I've got the bottom here of this structure coinciding with the, uh, the origin of my graph. The only thing that isn't so great is that I can't really see the grid through behind there. So uh, this picture object, the three little uh, dots there, opens the setting menu and then I can go to opacity here on the colour tab and I can just bring that back a little bit. So I can still see the bridge, but I can now see the grid underneath there as well. I'm going to start making some points. Now to make points, I need to select the point tool. Uh, I'll zoom up nicely. The other thing you might need, I suppose, is to... Uh, that's the one way, way we move the whole thing around. So I'll go back to selecting points. And uh, point A and B are already there. But I'm going to start putting some points along this part of the structure here. So I'll put one down at the origin. It automatically, it just gets alphabetic, that's point C. I'll put one somewhere up here. I'll put one now at my best estimate, I think that's the highest point of the span at that point there. I'll just move the view across a little bit more and I'll go back to selecting some more points. I'll put another one over here about halfway down and another one right down here at the bottom, point G. So if I zoom back nicely, I've got five data points here, C, D, E, F, G, which are, are measured by GeoGebra to be at these coordinates. So over here into my commands, I'll make a list, I'll call it list one, and we use the curly brackets for this. And I'm going to make a list of points. So we refer to these points by their names. It, it is case sensitive. C, D, E, F, G. And press enter. And now I have all of those points together as a single object called list one. If I want to do a mathematical model for the shape of this span, then the command is fit. Beg your pardon, that needs to be a capital F to start. Fit. There's a whole bunch of different ones. I'll be using fit poly, and then I have two, uh, this is the choice, list of points followed by the degree of the polynomial. 
So I can just click on that. It jumps to list of points. I'll type list one, right arrow, and then I'll go a quadratic polynomial. So there's the two there for the quadratic. And there it is, lovely. Seems to be a pretty good job. This is the parameters A, B, and C in standard form. Uh, the other thing I'm probably interested in is the coefficient of determination. How well this is fitting these five data points. The command for this one is capital R, capital S, square. You can see that it starts to come up. I'll select that. It asks what list of points are we using? Well that is list one, then right arrow. What function do I want to compare against the raw data points? I want to compare this function f of x. So there it is. Press enter. And my correlation, or my, sorry, my coefficient of determination is 1. It seems like it's a perfect job. That's probably a bit too good to be true. Now the default setting for GeoGebra, so settings, the default setting is two decimal places for rounding. If I bump that up a bit to five decimal places, and I'll probably have to give myself a little bit more room to view here, we can see that my coefficient of determination is not perfect. It's pretty good though, I'm very happy with that. And I've now got a bit more detail here in the values, uh, the constants A, B and C for my polynomial. Now of course, this is just a handy little way of getting the computer to do the uh, linear, the sorry, the polynomial regression for you so that uh, you can check the work that you've done on pencil and paper. And uh, if you've got an assignment where you're allowed to use technology, this is a great way to do it. Uh, and even if you don't, if you're doing it by hand, you can still use this to check your results. That's enough for now, and uh, see you next time.